Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Floyd Models Live Show. Here we are with you on the 29th. Is it? God, glasses. No, 28th. <laughs> knew I was close. I knew there was a five in it. Uh, of September 2023. Hope you're all doing very well and all recovered from the weekend. I've just about caught up with everything now, I must admit. You knew there was a five in it? <laughs> <laughs> That's from a Winnie the Pooh film. If you've got kids, you'll know. It's where... Al says about Skull, his school, and he's like, I, I knew there was a, a you know, a, a Y in it or something. So that's where that joke comes well, I've, from. I've got kids that are a lot, a lot younger than yours, but they're again, Winnie the Pooh's about 100 years old, isn't it, sir? No, I'm the same age, don't forget. My oldest is 24. 22 right, yeah. and 24. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. 21, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I've <laughs> doing very well. That's our uh, figure of the day over. And uh, everyone's happy and content. I mean, getting all your orders coming through. Just to let you know, I have got a handful of orders still to get out, purely because I made a bit of a balls up with the um, pigments. And um, I'm, I thought we had some in stock. In fact, you might know the real story to this. I'm a bit bad and didn't check the order off. And when the pigments all came through about six months ago, because the company I deal with are so good, I didn't bother checking. And then when I went to fill up, oh, we, we buy in like five kilos of it at a time, fill up the tubs. I've got two of the same colour, so they, they sent the wrong one. But I can't really blame them and go back and say, six months ago, I ordered off of you. So anyway, I've reordered it. It'll be in tomorrow, and your orders will all go out tomorrow. And that is it. I'm literally just waiting on pigments. Everybody else's order is winging its way to you. Uh, so um, they will be either with you, as a lot of you have got them already, because I've had a lot of emails from you, or they should be with you within the next day or two. So yes. And, and for the PM point of view, I'm about to say we've got an handful of things to get out. So if it's still pending on yours, it's going out tomorrow because what I needed yeah. to fulfil them came in today. But it was after the post had gone. But everything mm. will be up to date, as in if it's just pending for you tomorrow. So we uh, weren't done bad, actually, to be honest. It's uh, yeah. been hectic, mm. but we've got there. So... Yeah, yeah, yes. we were the same as well. I must admit, it was. Um, I was totally blown away, guys. I have to be really honest with you um, that... You know, a lot of the reason we do this show is Flory Fest came about because obviously we couldn't do any model shows because of COVID. And, um, you know, as a lot of you know, I know we don't do many shows anymore purely because we do this things like this instead. We've had more orders than we do at Telford, just put it that way. So um, from our point of view, it's absolutely incredible. It's amazing the level of support, but not just for buying stuff as well, but obviously just the support and the love and the messages we've had about you enjoying the weekend. Obviously, massive thank you to Brett. And obviously we have Pranjit on as well on Sunday afternoon. I've had loads of messages from people saying what a fantastic show it was. So yes, it was a good weekend all round. Exhausted and I had lost my voice by Sunday night. <laughs> but uh, so yes, but uh, apart from that, we are all good. Back up and running. And as I say, this week's been a bit chaos because obviously doing orders, stock, stamp things coming in, obviously post getting it out uh, and everything like that. So, And then I've had a massive 100-year-old oak tree taken down out the front, which has been a bit uh, of a problem with the old filming as well. But uh, we have got there. We've got there in the end, which is the main point. It is. So we're back good again. job. Yes. So don't forget, we'll be doing this all again in about two months' time uh, for is the turkey shoot long? weekend. Yeah, I think it is. It's something it's around the twentieth or something, isn't it, of November? Something like that. Oh, it's so, another quiz then, isn't it? Oh god. Yeah, another quiz for that one, Nate. Need that. <laughs> yes, <you are. laughs> so uh but yes. Get all good. Let's get Pramjit back. That was brilliant. Get Pramjit back and he can tell us about what they've announced at uh, Telford by then. Well hey, by that time. The uh, gannet should be out. So yeah, the gannet could... should be out, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. gannet should be it, out. It could yep. do a live build for turkey shoot. <laughs> yeah, you know could what? join us. Uh, how many is he built now? Do you tell us? Five, seven, isn't it? Five or six? Seven. Seven, seven. Loads, seven, seven he's built seven. now. So, yeah, yeah, one more. What's the problem? Just knock another one out. Yeah. So, uh, you know has, he has he painted any of them? Yeah, I know he painted we, all Before we went yeah. on live, he got a load of them built at the mm. nearest spray booth, yeah. didn't he? But I don't mm. think any of them were painted. They are all just like, yeah. Plastic. Uh, he will be painting them because they've got to do this thing, isn't it? And they paint them in all the schemes. So yeah. we've got those to come. But uh, I'm sure if you're going to Telford, obviously you'll see him there with all his gannets. What's a collected of gannets called? Is it a flock of gannets still, or they got some cool name like a murder? Hey. A gaggle. What is? A gaggle. A gaggle, <laughs> a gaggle, gaggle of, of gannets. gannets. <laughs> Not a murder, like crows, is it? There you go. David's saying that Thanksgiving this year is the Thursday, because that's when we start it. We will start it on the Thursday night. It's on the 23rd. Write that down quick. I'll write it down. 
So I need to know these dates because I always forget. Well, proper, proper dark, then. Proper dark and windy and horrible. Proper dark and windy. Modelling weather is upon us. That's proper there. modelling weather. That is. So, so we so. can start the week before. Yes. <laughs> Guess what you call? Because <laughs> what we should. Janet. Hey, what we should do is get more ambitious with each year of what we're going to try and build within that time period, but stretch it out by day. <laughs> what, like an MRAP, like Nathan? We're starting in August. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so go on then, Nathan, what's the collective again? It's... A plunging. A plunging? Oh, well. <laughs> Who knew? Oh, well. <laughs> Who were? Have you been on that 3D site again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay, a plunging. Well, I suppose it makes sense if they're all torpedoing you or dive bombing you. Don't know. Don't know. Cool. Who nice. says that's what it says on this internet site? So it must be true. Hmm. Kind of snooty yes. looking bird, actually, isn't it? It is quite cool. I do like the gannet. It's all right. It says a uh, funny looking bird and a funny looking plane. <laughs> <laughs> Do gannets fold their wings up like the plane does, you know, because they have got yeah, huge wings about it. Do they go like that as well? <laughs> they sort of do on this picture. <laughs> they have them above the red like that at the end. That's <laughs> <laughs> when they're doing that funny mating dance, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's have, it. <laughs> are we going to have a... Look at that. There you go. There's the quiz sorted. D David says, is, is, is a plunging a group of F-35s? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't I mention do fancy that. Gannet. Jamie Haggar says he fancies doing a derelict gannet. I do fancy building a gannet, actually. Hmm. Mm, does well, look like said before, nice. where we were talking about on Sunday, there is some very nice options out there, you know, yeah, different yeah. ones you can do. So, yeah, yeah I think it'll be all right, actually. Happy days. It's going to be popular. I think mm. so. We're on the throw winner there, I reckon. Definitely. Cool job. Right. Okay. So I've been really busy this week. If I just start and then we'll flap around everybody else's. Obviously, orders have taken precedent as trying to get everybody's orders out this week. So as you can imagine, I haven't actually spent a ton of time on the bench. But when I have done, as the guys will testify before I cleaned it before we got going, it was a complete mess. It was horrendous here. So I've been busy on the Viking. As you can see, it's coming to life. These tailplanes aren't stuck on. They're just a loose fit at the moment. I'll take them off now. But the Viking, as you can see, is now chipped and chopped. So as you might imagine, we've taken the tail off now. It has gone. We've got rid of our problem about this not fitting at all and being completely wrong with the help of... You remember that bit where I take away like one and a half mil? It turns out I probably needed it. So I've had to put one and a half mil back in. So uh, as you can see, so consequently, I have used a little bit of plastic card fillet in there. We've also had to go around and do a little bit of work on this, as we spoke about before. For some reason, the resin doesn't fit. So I've actually shimmed it with plastic card to make it the correct widths and everything. So by the time this is primed, you won't see any of this white stuff. But we've gone around and we've shimmed it and we've had to put some shims in here because there's a big gap in there. We also have put in a, a reinforcement plate of plastic card just down in here as well to uh, sort of make that edge a little bit nicer and neater because the resin one was just not enough of it there. All right, but that is all in now and it all fits absolutely fantastic. So now this is in and we haven't got any huge gaps anywhere. So we've taken care of that and it's all leveled out and ready to go. What we have got is, I can find it, there it is. I need to clean it all up first, but we've got the Sonar Boy dispensing area is gonna come on the back in here. It's gonna fill all that, but you can probably see again, it doesn't fit because this is, too long so i'm gonna to have to cut it short so somehow the measurements of all of this are all completely out but there we go we will deal with that but that's all done so that is technically complete this is now already we can just get on here and we can do the office so to be honest light gold gray and everything's gonna be black in there we're gonna use the kit deck all things for the instrument panels and things because you're not going to see any of it either we will liven up the seats with a bit of harnesses though because again we've got this now rick sent me a nice smoked canopy because the kit one is just clear but there's obviously some disparity about how these are manufactured first of all this one you can probably hear is rock hard it's really hard plastic this one is really soft plastic this thing is proper flexible the weird thing though is like russian dolls because this one fits totally let me do it the right way inside the other one it well, goes in here completely inside it so there's no problem, as you can see, if I put it down on the bench flat, it's no problem, it fits perfectly. So this is the problem. When you try and marry this one up, it's too narrow. If I put it in, you can probably see there's a big gap. So I put these plastic cards in, I'll cut them back to spread it, to act as a spreader. And once it's on, 
it is still a perfect fit, but it does need a spreader to widen those up a little bit. So as you can see, it's in. The weird thing is the genuine, the genuine, the one that came with the kit is a perfect fit. Doesn't need it at all. Because you can see, even though it's in, it's still a perfect fit, no problem at all with it. We're all in there, but without, it just comes away. So it's funny how these are two slightly different scales, which is odd, because again, this one literally fits on the inside. That's really, really strange how that fits on the inside of it, no problem at all, because obviously it won't go the other way because it's nowhere near it. So yeah, strange how the same kit has got different sizes of canopies. So that was a little thing. Anyway, so with this bit technically done and chopped up, then came the exciting thing of doing the wing folds. Now the wing folds were an absolute friggin' nightmare. The trouble we've got is, and I think it's the same right the way through this entire kit, is that I believe that at some point they've casted off of one of the moldings and now the scaling is slightly out because these are way too big. These are almost the same size of having, without it being an insert fit around. So it doesn't actually go into these at all. So what you have to do is sand all of these down to, you know, probably half a mil diameter right the way around it to get these to fit internally. But when they are, they're actually a really nice fit. So you get some really, really nice details. Unfortunately as well, my other slight problem with this kit is, is that we've got an issue with some of these little actuators and the latches and harnesses because of the packaging is a little bit weak, well, it's poor, um, that they've actually snapped off. So again, trying to fit these tiny little things back in are an absolute nightmare, but I will replace a few of them with a little bit of plastic card and stuff like that because they have sort of all come off. But as you can see, this is the one for the top. Still need to do a bit of filler work on that one. But uh, the wing ones are all good. And an interesting point with the Viking is, you notice on this one, you've got this big step here, and in here you've got this big step here. That's on one wing, so that wheel, when it goes together, goes like that. All right, fair enough, you say. The other wing doesn't have it. And I always thought technically aircraft are pretty much mirrors on the wings, but it just shows you this one's a straightforward, so it has no difference on those. But this one has a difference. If you're in the know and you're a Viking expert, let us know why that is, just out of interest. So, hmm. Do the wings take the touch at the top, or does one go slightly forward? No, they sort of overlap. They go one in front of the other and all the rest of it. But I don't think that would make a difference to why this one's like here to yeah, here. Because yeah. if you're doing it something in the old mechanism way, I sort of get it. But yeah, I don't know. It just seems funny how one's that way and one's this way. It's got to be something to do with that tank in, inside the wing, hasn't it? But yeah, then it's obviously got this tank in... inside the wing for whatever it why is would they for. Put it but... there? Yeah, I don't really know. It's a bit strange. weird. But I've looked at the reference photos and it is correct. They are like that. So just a bit weird, really. So anyway, I've got to do some clean up around these, tidy these ones all up. Next port of call is literally back into the office. So we'll get this painted. And then, as I say, we'll get it all done and deckled and harnesses, and then we'll get it closed up. And then, next thing for this little monster is we're going to obviously touch up a little bit of rescribing. Uh, but to be honest, really nice fit. It's gone together really well, considering this is all stuff full of resin now. Um, but it should be fine. But we are going to re rivet it. So, we're going to rivet it to death as well. So, uh, it's going to have riveting right the way over it. Most of the riveting, it looks like, is polished out. So, um, it'll just be the, the normal big ones around panel lines rather than the little faint ones for the runners and formers and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, I'm happy now. It's technically all the nasty, horrible jobs is all done. So now we can get sort of back on track with it and get it all together. Um, so yeah, no, looking good. Happy, happy so far. So that's going along well. Uh, in a moment, I will be back on this one. This is our little hell diver for the live shows. You might remember we've got this all together. So I'm going to go around and do a little bit of sanding work, things like that. And then we're going to be working on the wings. So I'm going to get the wing sections together tonight. It's my plan of action for this one. So yeah, no, it's been a busy couple of days, but it is all getting on now it's all coming together very nicely that old diver looks tiny compared to your viking it yeah. does actually considering the same <laughs> scale yeah i like, yeah, realize how that. big the viking actually is because because hmm. that old diver is not small plane or no or crew in the bay Do you know, vikings are aircraft i can't explain it but i've got a soft spot for it because i built yeah. the epic skid as a kid and ever yeah. since then i've had a random soft spot for the viking hmm. even though it's not at all in my area of interest to be honest, it. I know me. We were looking at it earlier just before we came on air, but the, the actually some really nice schemes for these. I know Matt really yeah. likes the the high vis version, which I do as well. Um, mm. But even in the low vis and that, there's so many different cool markings, and they used to go really go to town. Have some real fancy markings and tails and all the rest of it for them. So yeah, the Viking's quite a cool jet, really. It has to go to a seventy-two one, doesn't they? Let me just mm. check. Yeah. When was that released? Airfix did one as well, didn't they? Wasn't the Airfix yes, did one? I built the one? Airfix one when I was a kid. Yeah. 
and it just it's one of those kits like i really enjoyed it when i was a kid so i've got yeah, it, I think like, I did the airfix one was that the one where you could extend the mad boom at the back yeah 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 proper did it when i was a little little kid so that kit the, the hassi gala one oh guess what it goes back into the 80s you could do it for the classic oh you could do it as an 80s build yeah so you could pick either or then the the um, airfix oh, one because airfix one's from the 70s and it late 70s i think yeah, the airfix mm. one's older but i've got i wonder if the cigar one's raised or recessed it's a 78 recessed. gavin says it thinks it's raised oh i don't mm. know I thought it was Seven, 1978 tooling the Asagawa mm. one? Yeah. It's a big raise, that, isn't it? So it's a kit that's an aircraft that needs kitting again, isn't it? Yes. What what yeah. age is the Hawkeye? Because you've done that, haven't you, Matt? Well that's later. Yeah, the Asagawa that that's re, that's recess. That's that's a lot later. That's not a bad kit to be honest. It's just I couldn't mm. get into it at all. I just couldn't couldn't get going on it. Ended up in a booster. Well, I've binned it now, I think. I think it went in the bin. Oh. That was Gone. No, there's, no, there's, no, there's no mod toolings of it. Hmm. The kit. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, he is. He's on the uh, the national drink of Scotland. But made I'm on brew. pure gingers. Hey. Yeah. Sponsored <laughs> by I'm Brew Extra. <laughs> Scan you can. Hey, I'll tell you what, can. Leslie got me from, um, I think it was own bargains or somewhere, original recipe, iron brew. Oh, so that is made of gingers. I'll tell you what, it's really nice. Is Don't it true it's made of, of gingers it, it's, piss? It's full fat. <laughs> full fat. It's oh. proper full fat stuff, but it's very nice. <laughs> mm. well, cool, very nice. Right, okay, who's up next? Let's have um, uh, Matt seeing as he's right there. Uh, I've got to figure out which cameras you're all on. Right, Matt, what you been doing? What are you doing? Show us what you're doing. Well, I'm going to obviously finish trying to weather this thing, <laughs> this Land Rover. So we might yep. be going for a bit of the fart technique, as we're now calling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I haven't been in here much. Obviously, we work and whatever, you know, doing orders and all that. I've been a bit knackered. But when I had the oil paints on the go for... The head, Fred the head. Mm -hmm. I was painting this figure up as well. So this is one of the three D prints of the uh, one of the files that we got for the DAC tank crew. Yeah. So um, I was just playing with it really with the oil paint before they went off. So I painted his face and then I've been playing about with the uniform and stuff. I based it all up. I think when Prang we were talking to Pranjit on Sunday afternoon, so I brush painted the acrylic uniform underneath and then i've um the shirts like shaded and highlighted with oil paints hmm. um obviously the face is done over acrylics and, it, and his cap at the minute i've got a load more to do but yeah just, i've just been playing with that because i've not really been here much really so so that's hmm. about it but yeah i thought tonight let's see if we can get cracked on and um see if we can get this land rover wrapped up because i've got a project i've had a change of plan let me just change cameras for Telford. So um, I was. Nathan's saying, thank God for that. No, I was <laughs> going to build that for Telford. Mm. Oh, I've seen I, what he's got. <laughs> and I did start it, mm. but actually, it needs a lot more doing to it where I ain't got the time. So I'm going to put this to one side, but I am doing the Dragon 110. So we're still going to do a 30 second 110, but it's going to be the Dragon one. version that I've got some. So what I what I've done today, it because it because it's the Ravel boxing and it comes in a massive box for a kit like just rattles around in it. I've deboxed it, so um, this is going to be my live build for the next few weeks on and off camera. So it's going to be that one. I was going to say you do realise you've only got two weeks till Telford. It's not a bit more than that. Oh, no, sorry, I'm six thinking of October. Weeks. Sorry, yeah, sorry, wedding. six weeks. Yeah, sorry, six weeks. We're doing a build for your wedding still, are we? <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's yeah, what I was getting confused with. Centipede yeah. the tables. <laughs> that's why yeah, I'm out, really I'm really out of thinking yeah. with it all because of the dates of Flory Fest. <laughs> mm. so, so that is my plan. When this is done for my live build up until Telford, and then I've got a plan for after when we carry on, which is the 3D printed bits on the um, on the tank. But, yes. 
because we need a 110 on the table, don't we, Nave? We certainly do, because there isn't one at the moment. Mine got no. broken. Mm-hmm. So I'm stepping up to the plate to try and get it done. So somebody needs to. Why, I, why I'm not building a 48 for a seven second one is beyond me, but not. Yeah, I've got you know, go big or go home in it. <laughs> Absolutely. Fair enough. Cool. And, right. Okay. Who's up next? Let's have a look at mystery time. John. Hello. Um. Hold on. You yeah. moved your camera back. You had your camera the other way a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, it was completely <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the Avenger and the Stuka are both at the paint stage, which doesn't make good live show material, really, if I've got the extractor running all night long. Oh, right, okay. So, so what are you um, going to do? Have you got so a big 21? No, I've got rid of all me big 21s. So I need something for the live show, so... Yeah, right. I'm thinking I might give that a go. Fair enough. I like the top Possibly one. that one because that's yeah. 1950, so that'll qualify for the 1950s group build. Well, yeah. Hmm. So I think this oh. is going to be um, my live show build. Nice little 70 second scale, fairly simple. Cool. Do it. Make a do start it. on that. Okay, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Very good. Okay, right, next up, Andy. It's been a Spitfire yet? Uh, no, because I'm on something else, and I'll go back to it when I've done this. I'm building that <laughs> one, the Queen's Kit 109. <laughs> right. Which, weirdly, has got Hannans. I bought from Hannans, which I think must have been Telford pre-C, pre-COVID, mm-hmm. I believe. Yes. Um, and I'm just looking at Hannans, because the price on this is 39.99. Yeah. I thought, I wonder how much it's gone up by over the past three, four years. Hmm. It's thirty four ninety nine. It's five pounds cheaper. Oh, oh, not that bit. Do you know why that is, Andy? It's if you're on show prices. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> been diddled. Yeah, it actually, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. Mm. <laughs> <Damn>. yeah. <laughs> but I'm actually building a switch camera. Yes, I'm building it. Um, the cockpit's all basically painted, ready to go together. Fuselage together because the cockpit fits in. Where am I? It's, a, it's in underneath from the bottom. This is quite, it's got the top part of the engine, which acts as a spreader so that it keeps all this front end the right width, which is quite good. Handy. Don't know yep. why it tells you to paint it black because you're never going to see it, but it's mm. a nice little spreader just to keep the. Uh, Top part, of, of, which is a good idea. Really, really nice kit. Really, really nice hmm. kit. Cool. RLMO2 cockpit there. I thought RLMO2, it actually says um, 71 in the. Um, it's 71? Seven, uh, yeah. 66. Dark, yeah, dark grey, it says in the in the instructions, but that's wrong. Don't believe it. Uh, uh, 1944, 1944, 1941. Um, E3 would have been mm. far over two. Definitely, without a doubt. So the instructions were wrong on that. Fair enough. In doubt, Battle of the Britons when they switched it. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, after that, wasn't it? So, yeah, this is definitely, definitely right. Cool. cool. Very nice. Very nice. Nathan, how Hello. are you? Have oh, you recovered really? from the weekend? Well. Camera, I've been busy, you know. I've been in the. I've not got boxes to pack and things to ship out, so I've been muddling. <laughs> so obviously, I finished that on the group build. Yeah. On the, not the group build, the Flory Fest weekend, and to say I'm, I'm still working on the old Colombian saber, but the decals are going slowly. So that, I thought, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll. I've had an easy build, so I thought I'll, I'll start the MRAP. I've spent hours on this, <laughs> literally, <laughs> and all I've got so far is one like wheel axle mm-hmm. and a chassis that you're never going to see. Mm. <laughs> Talk about contrast, because this has got what feels like what feels now about five parts, mm. and this has got a million parts. Just it's just it's silly. Is the word I would use. So if you could score it out of one to five, I'd just score it, score it silly. It's just nuts. 
Yes. So why? Why? There's no when, <laughs> when I said I've done all this and I'm going to put the thing on top, and then Phil said you put something underneath as well. <laughs> it's like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, well, we were discussing it. He said, sorry, I'm going to show it upside down in a ditch. I said, we still can't see it because there's a metal plate that covers all of that. So it, it's like <laughs> building a full interior for a submarine, isn't it? It's like, what's yeah. the fucking point? Yes. But having said that, you get, in, you, you get in the zone and you get the Tamiya extra thing going and it goes together. Fault, faultless bit, you know, there's no drama at all. Mm. I'm starting to wonder why somebody would sit down at their desk and CAD everything separately. The, the problem I had, one of those frames that covers the the actual um, the, the, the sort of you know drivetrain in there mm. was absolutely smullered because I got a damaged box one. Right. So I had to straighten it all out as best as I can as well because those cages are quite important that they're square because everything bolts to them, isn't it? Well, yeah. one of mine was almost flat, so I had to rebuild it and put it together. And because it wasn't square, it gave me an extra hassle as well. So. Okay. Like, then it just builds in an opportunity for error to roll into something mm. that really doesn't fit, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. the detail is absolutely outstanding. You know, it's, it's almost, almost a point where, yeah, it's almost workable. That's the thing because everything yeah. is in there. You know, as I, mean, I say, it's all, yeah, that's it. All the steering works, but it's almost like the entire drivetrain and everything. You feel like it should work because there's so much detail and parts to it. Mm. So. It's interesting because you're building like the transmission and all that jazz, and you're sort of learning a bit about the vehicle as you go. Just, it's just going to be an absolute flipping saga, isn't it? Mm. So, <laughs> talk about contrast going from that. The, those two kits could not be from a more different philosophy. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Yes. You've got a simple way, or the incredibly complicated way. This way <laughs> better. Because I mean, if you you know, do you know it reminds me of is building a ship. Yeah. Building like the Yamato, where you've got a million bits to glue together. Mhm. Mm but at least you can see it when you're building a ship. Yes. Yeah. Is it I'll remind you of the Mary Rose? Through it, I'll plow on. Mm. The Mary Rose was the best ship I ever built, but I did build the uh, one seven hundred Yamato, and it's got all a million guns on it. But at least you can see them. <laughs> We'll carry on with this. So not tonight. Oh, this is kind of like a proper photo build. But what I'm going to do tonight? Probably stick the levitating decals on this. These are um, which got Aztec decals, and they just seem to be determined just to levitate slightly above the surface yeah, of the model. Just will not adhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We get the old of... uh, X20A on it. Give them a bit more bite. I think it's it is a case of just trying, like you said, just trying a few of the setting solutions to see which one it takes to. Yes. Happy days. That's me. My modelling week, building a chassis. <laughs> yes, Daryl, it is the MRAP, the uh, Ryfield one. Mm. So, as I say, Nathan's going through the pain. But the MRAP the moment. is... Yeah, I'd rather be doing the B29 cockpit dials, if I'm honest. <laughs> Which is that killed that build off for now. Um, but no, I can see why people do it. If you, you know. But it just seems a shame to do all of this and not be able to see it. Yes. Because when you did like your tank with the full interior, you did it so you could lift the lid off. Yeah, so you can still see that detail, yeah. See it, but then you've got all the rods right at the bottom, which you can't see. So why are they there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think like, yeah, you think from, like Pramjit's time is finite. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have your kit designer work on bits you can't see why not just have your kit designer do two kits a year instead of one yes that's the that's the cost of this isn't it that the pendants mm. must have spent hours on cad yeah the tool a bit down here i must admit that's one thing i've you know it was obviously kudos to the kit because some of the tooling is very clever because it is absolutely minute mm. so it's like you know really some poor schmuck <laughs> spent a long time getting all that right and getting it all in there. Mm. And then obviously coming in at a certain price to be able to, you know, with the tooling part of it, couldn't have been easy either. But you say, if you're into it, clearly I think Daryl's saying he is, he's loving his build of it, then, you know, that's fine. But you say, that's the thing, we're all slightly different builders. I'm a, I'm of the, not that it's a, an escape from, well, it is a sort of, I'm of a work all day, come home, mm -hmm. Spend an hour at the bench. 
So I'm, I kind of want a relatively impatient modeler. So I want yes. to see kits moving on the bench <laughs> and then off the other side. I can see this taking quite a long time to finish. Yes. You, you want yeah. if you sat there for an hour or an hour and a half, you want to see some progress, don't you? Whatever you're doing, mm. I think with kits like that, it takes a lot to see any progress. It's going to take a good few hours. It's, mm-hmm. it's, I think the thing was when I'd done like stage whatever it was, and then turned the page, I was like, I'm still working on the chassis. Brilliant. Mm. I yeah. want the, I want the top on. I want the interior done. But then I'm going to go down rabbit hole soon. Like, what colour is all this? Is it literally all just sprayed sand? Yes. Yes, because I had a bit of help with my build because one of our members actually works at uh, whatever it is at Maycomb. Is it Oshkosh? It is Oshkosh. Yeah, Yeah, and said it's literally everything is just sand. It's the standard colour for it. It just, I mean, I know I'm not knocking people that do this as their main modelling. Well, it's a nice change. I did enjoy building the Yamata and the Mary Rose when I built those. I'm enjoying mm. it. But don't get me wrong, it's not like a big moan. It's just more of a why. It's a bit of a whimper. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a, bit of a, <laughs> a whimper. I think I just want to be... I want to be not building the chassis for the next week. I want to get on. Yes. Maybe I'll... I'll Sorry, Dave. I was just about to say, I've seen you look through the instructions and I think it is one of them kits where you kind of have to kind of stick, not rigidly, but quite close I, to them. I think I am doing that because I don't know this sort of build. Yes. And you're going to bite possibly, you. <laughs> I could possibly step onto the interior and it, I'm wondering if it just goes on. But I just dare not deviate because... I'm not experienced on this sort of modelling. Well, Phil built it. Phil, can, can you deviate from it? Not really. No. Right, there you go then. Your answer's there. Because the thing is, you say, a lot. I'll tell you what, one of the worst bits is fitting the chains because it's got chains that run underneath it, which are for the side steps and stuff like that. Mm. And it's like, oh my God, it drives you mad. <laughs> I think the next thing I'll end up doing is like researching the MRAP and looking at it. So I'm going to do it for the. USA SIG. Mm. So a bit of research into the Middle East conflicts. So, you know, get some pictures up and get into the weather and that's when it that's when it'll become a different build, I think. But the fact I can spray all this sand is a relief. I did I was dreading having to pick out different colours and stuff. We need a winch. So can. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit like I'm one of those people that if you, if you can't see it, why bother? Anyway, just a quick uh, uh, um, light. Mm. Like, Dave. Yeah. They got your overhead, so you can put your overhead on. Yeah. And uh, overhead. Yeah. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> it's it's over my head, though. It is, yeah, literally. <laughs> over your head. There we go. That's better. I can see what we're doing. Yes. And then, oh, and then Phil, on. put Andy on full screen. I want to see him in action. <laughs> see him yeah. go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's quite a good view, Andy, that. Yeah. Mm. Look, yeah. let's stick Andy on. Look, we can all... Look. Explain what you're doing, then. Talk us through it, Andy. I'm bending, at the moment, a <laughs> buckle <laughs> on a piece of photo etch for seat belts. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see all yeah. that in glorious technicolour. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, doing the seat belts for it. Oh, look. Is that a new hairdryer, Matt? I know he's muted. Muted himself. I take it that's a new hairdryer he's using. It is. I think he's... He's been spending on Amazon again, hasn't he? He has. When's it Black Friday? That must be soon. Who's that, been spending on Amazon? You, with your new hairdryer. That's a new toy. Is that new? Have you seen the state of it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's that one. I thought you bought it's yourself a new patina. one. It's got I have, but that's at work. <laughs> that's the work one this is the uh, obviously the, oh. the home one god yeah yeah i had to put some tape around it because it melted with all the lack of thinners look on yeah that mine's one. done that it's all soft and squidgy yeah it's horrible <laughs> so i put whacked a load of tape around it mm-hmm. god yeah this is proper knocking on I must have um, picked it off pleasantly right decaline 
hopefully I'll come exactly. back to Monday and Sabre. I'll not do the MRAT tonight, I need a break. Where's the bloody cannons? Oh, there they are. If Airfix are listening, get this Sabre back in the catalogue. Brilliant kit. Everybody's going to be buying it. Buying overcraft. Yeah, mm. everyone wants overcraft now. Now they've made them oh. second hand worthless on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now they've killed off the second hand market no, nicely. Another one gone, so that's the Bond bug, the Jack. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing it on purpose, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah, that's what I've said. Somebody's like, through uh, Ormby's looking on, like, oh, what can we bring out? I think, oh, the Road to Dine is coming back out. That was another one. Oh, that's yes. nice. I love the Road to Dine. Yeah, and it left decent decals, so that rotor die, I know it's not perfect, but at least it left off decent decals. What else have they rebought out that, that's um, killed the second-hand market for it? I can't think. There's something else as well, but it's funny how they keep finding these moulds, isn't it? These long-lost moulds. <laughs> these long-lost moulds are like, oh, look what we've found. I wonder if they'll do that tractor that they did, the first ever kit. Oh, right, the, yeah. Well, that'd, be, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Probably have to tool it from scratch. I bet those tools are gone. Mm, I bet that one's long been scrapped. When's Airfix's big anniversary? I wonder if they've got like a hundred year anniversary coming up. Hornby have had one, haven't they? I don't know. When was Airfix? I don't know. Someone on chat can. When was Airfix launched? Post war? Was it the 30s? I don't know. Was it pre war? think so i don't know to be honest no i must admit i don't know it's, um... oh, 1930 hey up 100 years is coming up there you go then oh if mm. let's hope we live that long well i'm planning on it <laughs> or if it's still here <laughs> yeah, we, we'll still be doing this i think we'll still be doing flory fest all building focus yeah. attractions. Flo 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 Florifest geriatric edition. Yeah, the geriatric edition. Yeah, you know what? that's what'll Save happen. It. It's not that far off. <laughs> that's the depressing thing. It'll come round quick. You what? Might have even finished with Spitfire by then. <laughs> no way. No. <laughs> you're you're still be adding that. finishing touches, and he's not happy with it. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> miss that Spitfire when you finish it. Be like losing a friend when he finished, and it's in the display case. Mm -hmm. I am expecting him to bring it to the shop. Took a seat in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I'll bring it. Well, if Put we it do on the have a... a sick table and see if anyone says anything. Sure, they won't. <laughs> well, they will. <laughs> say everything about. The... <laughs> hey, do you know what? We need to build a MiG twenty one because someone nicked my MiG twenty one from a Bolton show a couple of years ago. Seriously. <coughs> Nicked it. Nicked it. <coughs> Sorry. Seriously. I didn't know that. Kid you I didn't not. know that either. No. I've had like an overall pale grey MiG-21 aftermarket hit up probe and all that. This Vesta yeah. one. It's a, it wasn't like worth anything. And I was like, it's gone. Have you actually checked the MiG SIG? <laughs> see, <laughs> see if it's on that. <laughs> So whoever nicked it, I hope they're enjoying it. <laughs> you know what'll happen? In years to come, it's going to come and it'll appear back on your desk without you noticing. Yeah. All right? And then somebody's going to start sending you postcards from it from around the world. <laughs> it, it just troll me with it. I saw, yeah. I saw something on Facebook and there was a stapler. It says, do not remove from four. Yeah, I saw that yeah. as well, yeah. He's, he's travelling around and, the world with it, isn't he? And, <laughs> I, I, I I might know someone whose stapler ended up in jelly at work because <laughs> he was such such a staple Nazi that we put it in jelly. <laughs> he didn't move it off his desk. He said, "Do not move off my desk." And he was a proper like, "Can I borrow your stapler?" No. <laughs> the science teacher, with some help, put it in jelly. <laughs> I claim no knowledge. He's watching. <laughs> so common is it common at shows to have things stolen? Well, PM's had stock stolen, haven't you? Yeah, yeah we've yeah. had kits nicked. I've had loads of sanders and washes over the years nicked. And a couple of models have disappeared from competition tables. 
Yeah. Yes. That's usually the one that a, a model will get nicked off competition. But yeah, I've had that kit nicked. And you just kind of, I'm, I'm the sort of person who's going to wander off and have a look at the sort of show and leave the table unattended. And it's when I was packing up, I was like, hang on a minute, one down here. Yeah. That's, that's bad, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, uh, model shows have... There's a lot of um, five-finger discount mm. goes off at model shows, and any if you ask any traders, any of them, they'll all tell you the same. Yeah. yeah. And it's some... a shame. But... Do you know what? It's probably one or two people. It's the same person who's doing it all the time. What's so, like yeah. a maniac? Little tea leaves. <laughs> It's sad, isn't it? it is. I don't know what satisfaction you get out of looking at a model you've nicked. I've got no idea. Yeah, because it's it sounds an horrible thing. Not not an unbuilt one, but a built one's pretty worthless. Mm. Yeah, surely. You know what? You what are you gonna do with it? Perhaps they nick to order like cars yes. for like <laughs> loaded on a crate to Africa. To be yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just annoying because I've got. The gap on that, I've got the DDR is underrepresented on the SIG table because I've lost my MiG 21. Do we need the DDR stuff? I've got a MiG 15 and that's it. I had a MiG 15, a 21, and I never finished my 29. Oh. Yeah, I didn't finish the MiG 19 that I was doing because that was going to be DDR and that's stalled. Right, it's just annoying. Perhaps we should well, do a DDR SIG. Yeah, that's so. it. Right. And then everyone can. Yeah replenish my mig 21 that's it folks the group builds are cancelled yeah we're <laughs> yeah. changing one for next year we're moving the uh, popular one and we're doing that instead <clears throat> so i have got the eddard 72 scale 21 to redo it but it's just like i can't i'll get around to it one day is that um, what it was in eddard 72 one then no it was the the, the zvezda one oh, the, so it wasn't the best kit you know but it, anyway such is life. It's just weird, like nicking a built kit. Mm. It's a Bolton thing. Well, we like... lost a very expensive kit at um, Thingy, Cosford. didn't we? Cosford. At Cosford. Yes. Yeah. So Probably the most expensive kit we had there. That went walking. The Wing Wing Phantom, wasn't it? Yeah. Tukimori Phantom. Yeah. Tukimori Phantom, yeah. Yeah, and Carl picked up like the drafting world got their band in broken into, didn't they? It does happen. Yeah, but to like... be honest, no disrespect, but that band was broken to in a car park, you know, where they were staying in a hotel. And that could happen to anyone. That could have been a car, it could have been a work van, but the bit where people are nicking from a model show... Bit different. You know? It's slightly different, that, isn't it? Yeah, you well, think okay. it's... The... Sorry, it's on me. Well, it's a community of modellers, isn't it? It's like everyone's got a shared yeah. interest. That, those kits nicked out the car park will just be the nearest cash converter. Yeah. They won't They won't go... I don't think that's a modeller. No. The thing is, you know, um, you know, like the Bolton show? Yeah. You know when anybody was a bit announced who were into sort of thieving, shall we say? Mm. Right, whatever the what all they've got to do is work out what's on on a weekend at, at a venue, yeah. Mm. And obviously, the hotels around there, if, do you know what I mean? Vans get you know broke into all the time for tools and stuff, but it yeah. doesn't probably take much to work out, like, oh, well, there's an event on, there's going to obviously be traders there, it's an ideal mm. time to go and have a, have, have a you know, uh, have a fish, go fishing. Yeah. Yeah. A bit pirating, do you know what I mean? I don't know. But or is that or is that it's just still, me? Is that just me thinking like that? <laughs> yeah, it's still freaking annoying though. It's, it's you know? Because it's your profit for that entire weekend, all that weekend's work's gone. Yeah, exactly. It's a difficult thing to ensure as well, isn't it, when you stock out of premises and stuff. Well, the thing is, not being funny, is that, you know, if if they had all the insurance, it's not a problem, because we do used to, is that we used to have a, a a certain level of cover for what's in the van, you know, mm. which would cover what was in it. So in theory, you would hope that they would have had the same, and you know, and just playing off the insurance, isn't it? But it's just the hassle that all goes with it, 
you know. But, but again, it's after when you've took it wherever show it is, and then if it's been nicked before you've even got to the show, mm. your stock's gone, hasn't it? Yeah. If, they, if they're underinsured, it could be a real issue, couldn't it? Yeah, I remember not me, but a company I used to supply with um, washes uh, at the Perth show at Scotland at the Nationals. Their one, they had a box of washes nicked, mm. and it was their full stock of it. All went, and that was stolen from the show in the actual arena. Terrible. You know, they were hopeful that somebody just picked up the box my mistake, but seeing as it never came back, I think that all went out the window. But same hope then. Because the same thing, it was like keep an eye out, see if anybody's flogging washes anywhere. So. Yeah. so Chris has just put up thanks Phil for the tip on the picture hanging clip, so the bees news. Yes. Everybody on the chat is basically in agreement that it's just pathetic how you would do that feeling. So. It is what people do, unfortunately. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. I think... I think Chris, I couldn't imagine ever contemplating sticky finger in something. It's because you've got a moral compass. That's yeah, that's all right. Unfortunately, a lot of people out there got, don't have that. Got some sense of basic right and wrong. That thing. It's just shocking what's going on. Shorts. I think. I think. Do you know the classic kit one's got people really thinking about next year's group build today? Mm-hmm. Good. That's going to be cool. I will. If anyone's missed it, I'll still be run through this group so it's like the end really quickly. Yeah. We were going to do our way, but we just give you a year, didn't we? You just give you a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dodge that one, thank God. That's it, so that's Mind it. you, you could do that as part of the classic kit one. So well, as long as you were born before 1990. <laughs> 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 I know a lot of our members weren't. I'm all right because I've got a 148 scale Hasegawa F4F. Mm. Which is when did that come out? All oh, right. It's a deckle sheet, not showing me what's underneath. Phil. Yes? The windscreen wipers work on Land Rovers. <laughs> no. All right. No. Do, well, they go, do... they go across your screen, but it don't do much for your visibility. <laughs> Especially if you're doing over 40 mile an hour. What, for, can you get a 40 mile an hour in a Land Rover? <laughs> you're better off just leaning out the window but anyway if you can't see anything because if it's raining you would have steamed up by then that's a good point yeah, it's like <laughs> so you would know you wouldn't see absolutely anything <laughs> hey can you get safari windows for a land rover we well, just take the top of the the doors off Well, I know you can, obviously, you could, you know, I mean, you could take the windscreen out, can't you? Yeah, you drop the windscreen forward if you but, want, yeah. you can't get pop-out ones, can you? You know, like Safari windows where you just pop Yeah, pop no, they do. All the Series do do 1, it, 2 what... have them. Yeah, Series 3 have them. Oh, OK. Mm. Yeah, they leak like buggery. And as you're driving around, you get spat at. <laughs> Literally, they leak really bad. So if it's really raining heavy and you're driving along, they, it flicks water at you as you're driving along. It's a brilliant design. It makes keeps you awake. That's, that's the job of a Land Rover, it just leaks. <laughs> Perks of being a Land Rover owner. I had a Series 1, and so I, I know all of this stuff. But yeah, yeah, they just leak and water goes everywhere. So with all that electrics, I'm amazing I'm still here. You need another one. Do you know what? Well, you, as you know, I've got a Land Rover dealer down the road, and he's got a nice Series 3 sat on their forecourt currently. Well, I, I've been looking. <laughs> yeah, you sent me one you were looking at. <laughs> it's no. like half a Land Rover. <laughs> no, hold on, let me. Let, this is a Series Two, right? Uh, One hundred and nine recovery truck. Yeah. Um, it's got it's got a day and fifteen hours left. So it finishes on Saturday. Yeah. It's it. Am Am and Ford is it? A double M A N F O R D. I don't even know where that is in the country. I don't know where that is. No. So, I don't know, how old is it? Let's have a look at the date of it. It's a, what's it, what would be a Series 2? Uh, well, it would be anything from, God, I'm trying to think now. Uh, so it's, it's got a registration of CSV854. Okay. Is that an, That's an early one then, isn't it? I would have thought so. Hold on, let's have a just... Uh... 
I'll have to send you the link. It's got it's got potential. I must admit, I was looking at a Series One, eighty six inch, same as I had Series One the other day. Mm. But yeah, it's a bit. It's a lot of money. But it's a beautiful one because this guy's had this right since I don't know, whenever it was. But that's up for sale. But it's like price and application. But I know roughly what it will be. But it's actually almost a mirror of what mine was. Yeah. So here we are. This is it. Have a look. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So how old's that one? Uh, this is, I think it's a 53. So it's 1953, this one. But it's literally a mirror of mine. But I did mine up. But this is what mine looked like when I got it. And there's a mirror of you under the bonnet, fixing it. Yeah, that's it. Bloody thing. <laughs> when you start, I don't start. But yeah. It's... Hit it with a hammer. No, because don't forget, you can actually start these from a handle. Start a handle. Oh, Crank God. it by hand. This yeah, if you've got a flat crank. battery, it's not a problem. Stick the crank there, start a round in and jump on it. Well, get the generator going. <laughs> hey, it's one... great with the Series 1, because you can still run a prop shaft off the back and everything, so it's all there, you know? With all the modern yeah. ones, don't have all this crap. So if you do need to run, I don't know, a water pump or something, you're good to go. <laughs> the ones we used to have, like all the young lads wanted to go in the Land Rovers. Until they've been in the Land Rover and then they'd stick to the back of the Bedford. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're not not nice things to be in, are they? No, no, I they're not comfy. Cultural. I think yeah, so. they're definitely not comfy. It's to say the best thing about them is being off road because on road they're just as bad as they are off road for comfort yeah. wise. So you might as well be off road and having a, a giggle whilst you do it. It's the back You've of the Bedford. Green lane in Phil. Go back. Well, that's what I used to do, wasn't it? That was my thing doing that. Bit of green lady, used to love all of that. Till you come across somebody on a horse, they used to get a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> or a load of bikers, you get all the scrambler kids on scramblers going around the lanes, and you come face to face with them, they used to get a bit upset. Rob says the guy at work has put a series two body on an MX5. It's a sight. Okay. <laughs> I'm not being That's... funny, would that work? Because the weight of a Lanny. On an MX5. <laughs> That's a cool it's, it's idea. It's aluminium. It's got to be light. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tried to push one? No. <laughs> yeah, but that's all the all the gubbins of the engine and the prop shafts and stuff, the weight, isn't it? To be fair, the bodies yeah. are light. <laughs> the panels are like, like weigh nothing, do they? No, that's right. You take the doors off and that, it just weigh nothing. But you say a lot of it is all the big heavy stuff underneath. Yeah. Well, I remember taking off the rear bloody prop shaft, and that weighs a freaking ton when you're lying under it trying to get it out off your chest. Didn't know uh, rust weigh that much. So, <laughs> have you spoke to Tam, Tam about having uh, Land Rover then? To be honest, she's all right, because she's actually a country girl at heart, and she used to have an old Discovery for years. So, I think if I did, if I do drive home with one and say, oh, look, I, I found one of these, she'd probably be all right with it. I could probably get away with it. Probably. She so drive it. I have said about it, just going out and getting a Defender, just a, an old 90 and doing it that way. Mm. And uh, she she was like, well, she wasn't against it. That's when I said, we need one for putting all the crap in when we need to repair fences and stuff and various yeah. things. Like, yeah, well, that, once in a I, lifetime, I have to do it these days. The ideal, that. Yeah. So See, I've never liked that. Mm. Never been in one. I, I kind of want one. <laughs> I don't know why either. I've the nice been... thing about a Land Rover, if you've never owned one, they don't fail to disappoint. They, they're horrible, they're crap, they're a horrible drive, they're a pain in the ass, they break a lot, considering they're not supposed to. It's just that they'll break, but they'll carry on going, so you know you've got to fix it even though it's broken. So they do that quite a lot. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's not like, if you get in a Hilux or into a Nissan, oh. it doesn't have that same thing. You know? What, re reliability? Yeah, comfort and reliability. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I think it's, it's it's one of those things where I think once you've owned one, you have it in your sort of blood, you know? You sort That's... of... You, you forgive it. It's a bit yeah. like your kids. You always, you always have your favourite one, so you have to mm. forgive the other one. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's the same thing with owning a Beetle. Once you've owned one, they're kind of in your... Yeah. I know people think it's more a Mini or yeah. 
you know, whatever, and Morris Minor or whatever, once you've kind of the, the charm and hmm. I don't know, it sticks with you. I don't know what it is. I know I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. I think also the other thing as well, the nice thing about a Land Rover, which is the same as really with the Beetle and that, it's not hard to work on yourself. It's something you can do yourself. Even if you just got a Haynes manual and a load of YouTube videos, you can pretty much do anything on a Lanny. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What a Morris Miner. Have you had one? Yeah, old lady down the road had one and bought it off her many, many, mm. many, many, many moons ago. They've got a distinctive note of Moggy Miner with the exhaust. Yeah, yeah. Fair, and it's, smell. It's surprisingly <laughs> um, agile around corners in the wet. <laughs> well, they've, they've got wheels as thick as a bike. Would you expect? Okay, the same and, rhythm. Rear, and rear wheel drive, yeah. Skinny, skinny little tyres on them. Yeah. yeah, you could go drifting in it, although you might roll it over. <laughs> yeah, I found out once. It was very... Um, all of one. Austin Allegro. There you go. Oh, yeah, the estate. Oh, proper passion wagon that was. <laughs> Allegro. Vanden Plaar. Yeah. Is, um, I had a Vanden Plaar once, and every time he got in it, used to, I used to press the little button, and it used to go, fuel level, okay. Oil <laughs> level, okay. And I, it was like having kit in your car. None of it worked, because it was all broken, clearly. But say, it was still what, quite was, cool was, to make this thing say it. <laughs> was, was the oil level okay? <laughs> no, probably not. Probably had none in it. <laughs> but, yeah, it just used to say it every time you got in it. It was great. Please fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> do, you know, do you know, so I could see you having, Andy, a Rover SD1. Do you know um, what? I'd have, I'd yeah. have, back in the day, I would have killed for one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you can get a nice sort of V8. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, most of those are now living in Land Rovers because that was used to be what we used to hunt down was the old Rovers to get the engines out because they go beautifully into a Lanny. Either Land Rovers or Triumph Stags. Five stags, mm. that was the, wasn't it? The, yeah. Big thing. As long as it's not a, an Austin princess, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a cheese wedge, wouldn't it? With a vinyl wedge. roof. It's a cheese wedge with a vinyl roof. <laughs> I bet they a ton of money now, them bloody things. My mate almost got cut in half by then. He got decapitated because he was in the, in the front. And he mm -hmm. was talking to his mum out the window, and he he put his hand on the um, window thing up. And in those days, they didn't have like a special cut-off or mechanism, did they? No. So as he's leaning and he's trying to pull himself away whilst still pushing down on the the button to wind up the window, so he's got his head stuck out the window, being decapitated by the window going trying to still go up. Oh, so like nowadays, they got sensors and they stop, but in those days, they didn't. So. <laughs> I, had a Hillman, I had a Hillman Avenger as well once. Did you have a Tiger? I had a Hillman Minx. I've got a photo of me with it still. It was my first car. This with a bench Avenger seat was, in the front. It was great. It was the most bog standard Hillman Avenger. It was, uh, I think it was Pennants because I had a, a, a Escort 1600 Sport as my first car and I wrote it off. So my dad bought me this Hillman Avenger. It was horrible. I think it was just um, to teach me a lesson, I think. I've got a photo of myself with my first car. Let, hold on, let me find it. Just to go down memory lane and look, see what I look like in my youth. Yeah, somewhere. I was a 1600 Sport Escort Mark II. And I saw one on piston the other day for like £26,000. Crikey. Parking. Yeah. And mine ended up middle of the road with its back end ripped off. Just after I spam it and the car went inside of it. Still said it was their fault even though it was on their side of the road. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Careful with Colombian roundels, you can come upside down without paying attention. Here it is. Look, here's me working on my first car. So, this is one of those things my dad he said, I'll tell you what, I'll buy you your first car. Unfortunately, it was a wreck and I had to do it up. 
So here's me. Give a look for her. There you go. That's my first car, Hillman Minx. Do you know what we did, right? We painted it um, basically purple. Yeah. And then down the sides here, there's actually a coach line that runs a little bit lower, and we did it in yeah. like cream. This is my, my hot rod. It's, so it's two tone, yeah. Oh, God. I so look at the wheels on that, everyone. Was that just a Minx or a Super Minx? No, no, it's just a normal Minx, unfortunately. You can so, take the yeah. uh, bodies off the chassis on then, can't you? You can take the what? The body the off the chassis? Off the chassis. Mm. No, it's probably that knocking noise I used to get in it. <laughs> it separated itself. Oh. It separated itself. I, I did. I used to have a, get a real knock with it as well. You used to go over bumps to get this big knock. I thought it was suspension. Probably just saw only one bolt holding it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go around one island and the body will go in another. <laughs> your chassis yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, it just separates. <laughs> does bet you wonder right. why our father gave us cheap, horrible death traps, isn't it? I think my dad paid literally 50 quid for that back then and because uh, he used to have classic cars. He said, we get you something because like, I wanted a Fiesta or something like that or an Escort. And he's like, no, 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 you can have something old and work on it and you'll appreciate it more. Mm, all right. Thank God. Thank God my dad bought me a Fiesta first car. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> but funny, if I had that, then I sold it and then I bought a Peugeot 104, the old one, the old square one, T-Reg one it was, and that I promptly wrote off. So... So I was right with my first car, it's my second car I wrote off. Right, question time. Go on then. Uh, Revo Mark II, I think it needs to change his name on that one. I think he's a new member. He says, hi Phil, great Harrier build, more classic ones uh, like that please. Uh, you mentioned it was your top five builds. Curious to know what the other four would be. Mm -hmm. uh, do the rest of the team have a top five? And if so, what would they be? I'll be honest, I can all remember what I built yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Never mind top five builds. I, I, kids. I don't know. I'd have to look through what I'd actually built if I've still got them and go, oh, I enjoyed that. But yeah. I, I don't know. It's I kind of, um, what, you know, like this, say, take this Land Rover. I'm enjoying it while I'm doing it. But then once it's gone, you know, the next yeah. thing I built will be, another enjoyable build do you know what i mean i don't the one thing i could say i don't think i've had many where i've not enjoyed them hmm. i think that's more the thing we've really really struggled with it some of them is like i said before like not lack of motivation to do it it's just lack of direction so i've left it and then gone back to it but i can't think of anything that i'm thinking oh god i really wish i hadn't started this hmm absolute favorite kit though if you had to build one more kit and that was the last one you could build what would it be an M wrap, it'd take you forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mac <laughs> Yeah, Mac <Matt> 2 kit. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I tell you what, it would, if, it, probably genuinely actually, if you're taking your stash as it is, right, mm. and you had to obviously keep, get rid of all of it and just keep one of your stash to build. Which one would you keep? That's a good question. Well, mine would be me air, big airfix Stukas. Mine would actually be my Fondeers miniature Hampton. Really, the one you won't let go of? Yeah, it would. Yeah, because I know if it, it's going to take me decades to build it, mm -hmm. and I really like Hampton. I really yeah. like Hampton. I don't know what it is with that plane. It's just if Airfix bought one out like a forty eight or even a new two some second one, um, yeah, I'd be like over the moon. Because I've even got you know the AZ one, which is the old Valen one. I've built it. I've still got it. I'm not lost it, and I've got another one up there to build. So I don't know. I don't know what it is with that plane. It's just quirky and British, mm. and I like yes. it. So, so it'd be a toss up with that, or probably the Super Freylon. Uh huh to be honest, and then the rest of them I'm not overly fussed with, to be honest. I mean, I've got, got the Airfix Stuka there because that was my favourite build as a kid that I can remember. Hmm. But re more recently, I, I, in fact, I was eyeing one up on an auction the other day. There was a Kitty Hawk 
F eighty six K. Saber oh, dog. Big one. Yeah. Oh, just talking of kitty up kits, you know the RF one oh one? I found one on e- eBay and I left it and it was eighty three quid. And it still mm. had days to go on it. Oh, like that's ridiculous. Yeah, I was gutted because there was one on an auction site that we regularly talk about yeah. last week. And it went for 36 quid. Yeah, I, I saw that as well. Oh, God. Yeah. Weird that. Guess what, Phil? Hmm. I'm going to pull out, if I can find it. You can't use that. It's not available to the general public. Yeah, but... They'll get upset. Hey, <laughs> it's a tarp on a Land Rover. It's going to have moss on it. Okay. Could and green on stuff it. growing. Before you, everyone says, green we green cannot green. do the green wash. It's That's a very special one that we made a... I made a small batch of, like, literally 12 of them. It's and, nine. Uh, yeah, so the guys all got one when we were going to go into full production with it, but unfortunately we can't. I've got a crate full down here, but I can't sell it. Sorry. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> just keep an eye out on eBay. Yeah. eBay. <laughs> so just get, just going back on track with this. So my favourite build since I've been doing this, so technically the last twenty years, would have to be my Intruder because I've got a real soft spot for the Intruder. Well, actually, it's not soft, but you know what I mean. Um, mm. So I like my Intruder. So that's definitely in my sort of top five builds of all time. So I really like that. Um, and then again, it's one of those things. Technically, I would have to have a Hornet in there somewhere. So take your pick which one I've built over the years for that one. But it would have to be a Hornet because I do like my Hornets. And again, I've got fond memories of different models I've done here. Like the A10, I really like the 32nd A10. Purely because you don't see many of them. And everyone told me it was a nightmare kit. And whilst it wasn't an easy kit, it wasn't a nightmare. It was all right. It just needed a bit of TLC with that. So that, w- that was definitely in there. Um, and obviously my Star Destroyer, the big studio scale Star Destroyer. So that's definitely in my sort of top five. But again, I, they've all got their own reasons for, for being there. Um, like the Intruder, we threw the kitchen sink at that and it's all scratch built, which is quite nice. That's before aftermarket. Um, so that one was all right. Doing things like that. Other things got a lot of aftermarket in it. Um, but they're my probably my favourite ones that I, you know... I've got quite a soft spot for for various reasons. And then the other one, I'll tell you what that is. That's easy. That's the um, uh, SH-60B, which is the Kitty Hawk kit. Because obviously Kitty Hawk, they're the best manufacturer ever. Bless them. And uh, But again, that's uh, really, really enjoyed that build. It was fantastic. Loved it. So that'll be in there as well. I think my, so, mine would have to mine be with my <laughs> fly, fly Models Hurricane. Mm-hmm. Which oh. I really enjoy doing. Um, AMK, um, oh, what is it? L29, is it? The little L29 Dolphin. Yeah, the Dolphin. Yeah, Dolphin. That was really nice as well. That's, That's a good put, like, Yeah, really good kit. And I put um, some like um, quick boost bits on it as well to, yeah, to like enhance it a bit. Mm. Uh, what else? Oh, my trumpeter tracked tractor thing. What's that called, Matt? Oh, the one you did off like the Rinaldi. The Rinaldi book, yeah. Can't yeah, even think what it's called. It is. Yeah, it's like the Stalin tractor, is it? Or yeah, like Stalin tractor thing. Yeah, that that, that was an enjoyable build as well. Came out well. So, so, so Yent answered though. If you could only have like one or two kits out of all your stash, what you'd have to keep and get rid, what would it be? Mine would probably be one of them would be the <laughs> Tammy Corsair. Hmm. It's like I said, it's like it's like choosing between Sep- your children, isn't it? Yeah, you're separating Andy from his staff, which is like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. See, I've got down here somewhere. I've got I can see literally from where I am, I can see two Hasigawa F eighteens. Mm. And I've also got a Re- Ravel. I've got, also got the Ravel F-18 mm-hmm. with about 100 quid worth of aftermarket for it. And yeah. I really want to build the Ravel F-18, <laughs> even, though I've got, even though I've got two Asagawa ones and uh, probably another one. Um, 
the new one, but yeah, I just want to something about the uh, Revel one because it got so much and it's so much for it, and it's not the nicest one to do. I just want to do it. To be honest, that would be actually be a, if if you wanted one of those kits, you'll look back of and think, do you know what? Really, yeah. something special. Then yeah, yeah that's definitely it. Because my one is one that it's back here now, is my 190, the big 30-second Revell yeah. one, purely because we threw everything aftermarket at it. It doesn't yeah. make it a brilliant kit, but it's actually quite a memorable one because, yeah, it's, it's just got everything at it. you know. Yeah. And I know I did that for the Mozzie, but again, it's not memorable because they went together okay. Yeah. You know, So I quite like models that are giving me a little bit of a challenge at the end of the day or something just a little bit different from the main. I know one of the guys was saying about what um, Graham's saying about Phil hasn't said an F-14 Tomcat built hundreds, well not hundreds, but I've built lots of Tomcats, probably 30 or 40 Tomcats over the years. And I still think it's a great kit, the Hasegawa kit. I've done the Tamiya one. I haven't done the AMK one yet. Um, but, you know, they're really, really nice. Um, but they haven't given me that sort of, wow, it's great. It looks great. And it's still the best looking plane ever. But <laughs> from a build point of view, then, no, it's a bit like F-16s. You know, the Tamiya F-16 kits, 48 and 32nd, are absolutely beautiful. But, yeah, again, because they're so good and so easy, well, not easy, but you know what I mean, they go together with no problems at all, you tend to forget about them quite quickly. Yeah. You know? So it's like the Tamiya's F-15, that e, the C that I did beginning of the year, and we did it as the aggressor. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I love looking at it because it's in front of me over there. Um, and it's a great-looking aircraft and all the rest of it. But I, I don't really remember doing it because it wasn't really a problem. We threw a few aftermarket bits here and all the rest of it, and it, it just went together and was really nice. Mm. So, you know, but that's what I said about the Harrier. The Harrier is a classic example of, like, no expectations. You know, the kit is what it is. It's a 50-year-old kit. And at the end of the day, we, you know, we, we put quite a bit of work into it, and it turned out really, really nice. And so that's why, to me, it's a memorable kit. It doesn't make it a good kit. Doesn't make it, you know, a very accurate kit, but it, you know, from a personal point, bill point of view, that's the way I sort of see it. Nath, go on in, Nath. Right, straight off the bat, I would say Revell Forty Eight Tornado. Yeah. I love that kit. It's a tornado. It's a good kit. But this Thank one you. here is probably my favourite kit of all time, and I've got it's a Harrier. The Italeri Sea Harrier. Mm-hmm. Sea Harrier. <laughs> okay. Sea Harrier. The S C Harrier. Brilliant. Mm. I love this kit. And the GR3. SC yeah. GR3. GR3. <laughs> right. So the same I'm surprised we're kit. not having a Harrier SIG next year. <laughs> the the SC, the AV8. There's a Spanish one, look. Funny that, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Marines. This kit, the SC Harrier. I love it. It's mm -hmm. it's not as good as the Airfix one because not as detailed. It needs an aftermarket seat, but this kit just falls together. It's accurate. It's recessed panel lines. It's lovely, and you can pick it up at shows for like eight, ten quid at the most these yeah. days. And it's just so buildable. It literally just falls together. I love that kit, the, uh, the Esky Harrier that Italeri have got the molds for. Mm. It's just. It's just such a nice build because it's a couple of sprues and I've got a soft spot for Sea Harrier as I always have because mm. in 1982 I was seven mm -hmm. and that news report of the Sea Harriers when he said I counted them out and I counted them back in again. It's just mm. that's it. It's, it's, so I've always had this like thing for fleet air arm. Yeah. I'm quiet. I do a lot of fleet air arm stuff. Mm. But this kit is just amazing. I love it. And it's not, you know, it's not up-to-date tooling. The cockpit details just completely lacking, but I love it. Mm. Well, it was the to kit be honest, it's from... back in the day, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it was, absolutely. Because the thing is, as I say, Airfix's new releases now, the FRS1, FA2, and the GR3, and all the rest of it, and AVAA, in 72nd, they're fantastic kits as well. To mm. be honest... The uh, Kitty Hawk, obviously, for 48th. Yep, really nice kit. Yeah. So, And obviously, you've got the Hasegawa version if you want to do AV8Bs, GR7s, gr nine things like that. So we are spoiled with some actually really nice Harriers out there. Oh, totally. You know? I think the Harrier is that special plane, isn't it? Mm. You know, 
air shows when you were a kid, Falklands War, Gulf War, you know, mm. served yeah. in Afghanistan. Like the Airfix Harriers, I love those kits as well. They're mm. better than this kit. They're better than it. But there's something, mm. there's just something about this kit. You know, it was so the, good. like John said, it, it was the Harrier kit of his time. Mm. Well, yeah, because you, yeah, the Matchbox one was the first one, wasn't it? Mm. Mm-hmm. But I've got like a little <laughs> Esky Harrier stash. <laughs> I can see a SIG or group bill coming on in the future. So one of these, <laughs> probably, it's a good turkey shoot one. Hmm. But there's just something about that. I mean, you've just done it, Phil. There's something about the Fleet Air RMC Harrier FRS hmm. one. Yeah. You know, it's that, it's the colour. The high yeah. ones are quite cool. Hmm. So for me, it's not the Tornado. Perhaps it really is the Harrier. You know, there you go. Just what I remember, Phil. Mm-hmm. Would you mind just nipping to the shop? Oh, hello. I haven't even got it. Hold on, give us a sec. I've got to get cause, it up. Because what uh, Nathan's just said, not about not about Harriers, but about something else, might be interesting to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> right, where do you want to go? Just specials. That's it. Straight to specials. Mm-hmm. Look what we have for sale. Oh, look. The Farewell Scheme GR4 on offer, just £33. That's a bargain. There you go. Nice. You can backdate it to GR1 with like zero effort as well. And the Rafael, which is one of their better kits as well, isn't it? Oh, to be yeah. honest, that's a great kit. I've built that many times now. Really nice I'll kit. put my babies back in the deep stash. <laughs> yeah, deep stash. That's it. <laughs> Bottom them away. We're not, we're not seeing them again tonight. Deep yes. stash. <laughs> I tell you what, we're both surprised at. I know the the AN two, the old Obby Boss yeah. AN two, is still how cheap that kit is, and that's quite. It is. A that's, it is. It's a lot of plastic in that kit, and for twenty quid, that's an absolute bargain. Do you know what? That's one of my itches to scratch. I've never built an AN two, no, and I've well, got a real soft spot for the AN two. I quite like it. If, if Jamie's still in chat, he's built one as one of them sort of post-apocalyptic so he knows it's a really really good kit in it so anyway yeah. we've updated a few of the specials so obviously Anson's here in the bow mm. fighter and uh, Tonka and a few other bits so if anybody's interested I know you're probably all like spent up and whatever up supporting us last weekend but you know yeah. a few more goodies up there again the uh, the sword <laughs> Sky Raider thing AEW yeah. one yeah. very nice yes yeah. brilliant <laughs> Anyway, cool. back, back to the show. Okay, back to the questions. Uh, right, hold on, ask me questions. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Graham says, hi guys, what nippers would you use for removing parts from a sprue? Jeez, have we, seriously, have we not? I've gone on about sprues and nippers for the last two weeks. <laughs> Sharp ones. Graham literally must be living in a box because he's missed this because we might have mentioned this. Have we got any or were they all gone? No, nah, they weren't long gone. Long gone. Right. Sharp sniff. I don't know. Goddamn or display ones, isn't it? Yeah, the display version threes or whatever they are, fives, whatever they're on these days, they're really nice. And to be honest, even the trumpeter, which is the ones I use, my daily cutter ones as well, the more expensive of the two. We do two types, don't we? Um, right. Slightly more yes. expensive one. They're really nice as well. You know, from a grade point of view, I have all three. Trumpeter's ones, which are just, what, master tool? They're all right. The display ones are really nice, and obviously the god hands are for doing very small detailed work. So, mm. so yes. Do you know of any list stay, uh, stating when each F-15J was purchased and when they changed colour of Bay 5 from metallic green to white? Jesus. Oh, God. No yeah. idea. Because obviously uh, the hey. Japanese ones probably, because they were um, built, but they were a different specification to the US one because they're an export version. Draws, so That's I don't know. You'd have, one, it? you'd have to check your information on that to know when they went from being metallic green to white. For, you know, he means the electronics bay behind the pilot seat. Yeah, thing is, so, we are his information. Yeah, we're not, not that, we're not for Japanese stuff. I'm not. I do you know what I'd do is I would drop IPMS Japan Sig in email, 
So maybe mm-hmm. look at one of maybe look at IPMS in Japan and see if we've got anything on their sites. But drop in an email, the Japan SIG. Mm. If they don't know, they'll know a man that might sort of thing. Mm-hmm. They're usually quite good, the SIGs on the IPMS, if someone gets in touch. Mm-hmm. That's, that's really niche. Can I ask a stupid question? Oh. I'll put it on overhead because this Mr. Soft stuff while we're on Japanese stuff. I these completely confuse the hell out of me. So I've got this blue one here. Yeah. Mr. Mark Setter. Yeah. And I've got Mr. Mark Softer. Uh-huh. Which one do I put over the decals now they're down? The green one. The green one. So the blue one, if you turn it upside down, it'd be like PVA glue in there. It is, yeah. yeah. Which probably so isn't. that'll take about four years to make back to being a nice smooth paste. I reckon it's literally PVA glue. Yeah. Right. Because that's what it, it smells like it and it goes just like it as well. And it's it sticks the decals down and it stops silvering. So it's literally like putting it onto a PVA uh, glue onto your decal before you squish it down. That's how that one works. The green one is the one that actually does all the work, though. Okay. So I'm going to Because the thing is, up. also, the trouble you find with the blue one, it, it really doesn't like shiny surfaces. And funny <laughs> enough, decals are shiny. So make sure it goes under the deck or not on top. So let me just write on the end. Before. <laughs> Before and after. Before and after. <laughs> you know, on, on both of them, if you add a little bit of a flow improver to them, right. it takes that water sen- water tension off them so they do sort of like, don't beat up. See, what I've got is these decals are not sort of begging they are because i've put that half on and they've had a couple of applications but they're just sort of sitting over the panel lines have you tried a little bit of x28 yeah nothing still not really no No, i sometimes find like as tech decals aftermarket decal responds really well to a particular thing so i'll give it a go thank you for that that's all right. No problem. That's what we're here for. There we go. Back to questions. Right. Okay. So next up, uh, we've got Chris. Chris says, uh, hi, gents. My Matchbox Lynx uh, is a dull blue. Um, I want to gloss it before deckling, uh, then gloss again. I have AK's interactive, intermediate, gunsy, goozy, whatever you call it, agent, shine enhancer, or micro gloss. Which would be better? Uh, I used Tamiya XF paints for the links. Um, uh, can I use it over clear parts? I'd use the gauzy stuff. I really like that now. I've really got into using it. Mm. Well, I use the gauzy stuff if you go back to my water bomber, and that was over flat red and flat yellow, mm. and it's like a freaking mirror. So that had one quite heavy coat of it. Um, the only thing you do have to be careful with, with the Goosey Agent, it's incredibly thin, so it does run. Yes. So if, you, if you're used to using more sticky type things, like GX100 and those, it ain't. It's really wet. You'll get drips. The only good thing with it, with the drips, you just literally go along with a brush and just swipe them off the drips. Uh, and it self-levels, and it really does a good job. And the other thing as well, it dries rock hard. Uh, very nice glossy finish with it. So I must admit, I'm a bit of a fan of it as well. Uh, he says, also, I'm running one airbrush at the moment. Any special uh, precautions I need to take between using paint and gloss? He actually says paint. Pint. He actually says paint. Yeah, I think I see that, but I'm just doing so it. He, he is, types uh, like I do, so yeah, I think let, he means let, paint. Let, yeah, let the alcohol wear off before you start glossing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Basically, just make sure your airbrush is completely clean. You know, just... Flush it, flush it, flush it. If you're putting clear coats through it, obviously if you've got reds or anything, that'll really screw everything up. So everything will have a pinky tint. So just make sure it's running clear and free, then go with the gloss. Goosey agent as well. If you're using lacquers or anything beforehand, you might just want to flush it out with acrylic airbrush cleaner. Uh, thanks again, and a heartfelt best wishes for Phil's upcoming nuptials. Do you know what? This time next week, we'll all be drunk. Or we'll all be sat around the table waiting for the person to get up to go and get a drink and say, yeah, I'll have one, please. I thought of this. <laughs> the bar, because we've got a bar there. Literally, you could almost reach it. And the table you're on is next to it, so you'll be is fine. Oh, yeah. Can we just shout to the bar staff? Another one, <laughs> you, please? To be honest, you could pull it off the bar. 
Because I thought, like you guys, where do you need to be? So I put you next to the bar. So, no, you know, I was thinking fair. ahead. Smart. That's what are you trying to say? Because <laughs> I know what you lot are like. So you lot are literally next to the bar. Well, that may do, but get the measure Schmidt. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I'll take the measure Smith yeah. up. Yeah, we all need some like mouthwash. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, oh my God, Mike! Can you not paraphrase this a bit? <laughs> it's an essay. I haven't it? pre-seen any of these questions, and now I just have. Like seriously, it's all right. We've got four what? minutes, Bill. <laughs> Jesus. God, okay, that later, is it actually a question? I'll just look anyway. He's got some questions. I'm not going to do the first bit, I'll read that all afterwards because we've run out of time. Question Does the 3D pre 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 printed glue holder fit guns bottles? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. It's just for Tamiya size, it's designed to grip the Tamiya ones. He means these ones that I do, so it's not designed for the um, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Cement. Cement. That's the one, because I, well, I tell you what, I've never tried it, but I imagine it won't. No, it isn't. Close. You can't fit a minute. I've tried it. Mister Cement ones are a bit. You could if you just uh, stood it in the top, but I won't push it because it will break it. It'd be easy so. in chichi box just to increase the uh, scale by. What, yeah. One percent. Couple of percent, wouldn't you? Yeah, it could do, I suppose, but yeah, no, it's not really designed for that one because this one doesn't fall over as easy as the Tamiya ones. The Tamiya ones fall over. They're like just an accident waiting to fall over. These ones that don't, if you notice that, these are more dumpy on the bottom, they don't fall over. So, because yeah, it's better glue. <laughs> Do you know what? I haven't used this, I've had this for ages. This is the black one. Can we get the black one still? Yeah, we stock it, we stock them all. SP, yeah, I've got them. I've got them here. I've got Mr. Cement SP, mm -hmm. I've got Mr. Cement S, and there I've got oh, get out of the way, stupid thing. And I've got you know, it, don't fit in his either. <laughs> no, I've, I've, but me, SPB. S, SPD. It's an SPD. It's an STD. Lost in translation. Okay, so anyway, part two of the question. Your 2024 B scheme group build prompts me to ask, uh, what do you uh, do with all your unused decals from your kits? Do you throw yeah, them yeah. away, give them up? Um uh, or say I'll keep them uh, for decades in a cardboard tube box in case you need them as spares. You never know. You know yeah. That's mine. I usually give mine up. Most of the members go, on scheme two or four, will you be using it? And I'm like, no. So normally they get shredded up and go out to all the members after I've done a uh, a build. Yeah, I, I keep quite a lot of them. I keep them all. Yeah, I must admit, I always keep them. I have got all of mine pretty much down here from it. But to be honest, most of the members, after I've done a build, I get a couple of emails saying, on that sheet, I don't suppose I can have blah, 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 which I always do. You can have them. I, you know, just say it's not a problem. Yeah, I keep them. I've got a drawer full of them, like literally full pile of mm. them. But you never know when you need them, you see. I've got a plastic box full. But I've got like a German decal stash, a tornado decal stash, random decals. I've got the decals from my first ever kit I built. Which is mm. the Essex Phantom. I've just got the corner of the deco sheet still from like 1980 something. <laughs> got the but you never okay, know. Okay, so. Well, this is it. You never know. That's the whole point. Uh, I've seen an advertisement for MIG aluminium masking sheet. Mm. Uh, it looks like bare metal foil. Probably is then. Uh, can it be used instead of bare metal foil? Or bet I think you mean yeah, uh, bare metal four. Uh, you get five A4 sheets in the pack for less than the price of one sheet of bare metal foil. Just checking before I haven't seen this stuff. Anybody seen it? I'm just looking now, trans with you. No, I've never seen it. It doesn't look. I don't think it. I don't. I'm looking at it. I don't think it looks as as good quality as bare metal foil. Hmm. For what I, the one I'm, I'm looking at, yeah. aluminium. Um, I don't know. Never tried it. Never seen it. So, but looking at it, it doesn't look as fine as bare metal foil. But bare metal foil literally is like a. It's very very thin, isn't it? This stuff, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's a new improved crow. I've never used it. I've had it ages. Well, yeah, I've, I've got some. A couple of them. Mm. I've, never used I've, I've never used it. It's just a sticky back metal coating in it. Yeah. 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 Burnish it on and then trim it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. The only trouble with that bare metal foil 
is that, and I don't know if this is the same, but if you try and use it for masking, it always leaves a glue behind. So you have to go around yeah. afterwards with WD-40 and clear it all up. It's yeah, sticky, it sticky stuff. So, so, it says, so it says masking, but they do aluminium sheets and they do metal uh, masking sheets. And the masking sheet is more like Tamiya, Tamiya tape. All right, I don't know. Rather than being a metal sheet, I think the metal sheet, the metal ones are for doing... You know, and all sort of that, and and you know, doing metal on aircraft and things. Oh. There's the masking sheets are actually for masking, masking, masking. They're two different things. Don't know, to be honest. We we'll have to do a bit of research on that and find out. He also says he's just been watching some of the old shows and was wondering if Nathan never finished his javelin. <laughs> well, you see, for the first time in modelling history. The kit unbuilt itself. <laughs> Disassembled and put itself back in the box. You know what? And do you know what? I mean, I wish I could film this because it's put itself back on the screw. Nathan, <laughs> trust me, it's not the first time. <laughs> I've been there as well. <laughs> I just don't know. It happened. I went into the staffs the other day and I thought, oh, it's like it never happened. Very nice. Cool. <laughs> I filed it in a round thing. <laughs> it was like a, that was like a bad dream. Yes. You don't, you know, okay. you don't have to whip it at all, do you? No, no. Whatever makes you happy with these things. Yeah. Uh, Michael says, greeting, gents. Uh, he's got the 148 scale Hobby Boss uh, Huey ready to go into paint, and he's looking uh, for any tips on how to mask the front clear parts uh, as these have got big wipers that are in the way. Mm. Lots of tiny uh, bits of tape or leave the wipers exposed. Uh, thinking that a coat of paint on them would make it easier to hand paint them afterwards. That's where I am. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Uh, or just go to the edges, blah, blah, blah. Right, hold on, a little picture. As you can see, see that? it's like that. That's why Pramjit's a genius kit designer. Because he yes. you two. Gives you the option, definitely. Do you know you but can personally, get that? Yeah, but I better enough mask set with the windows cut out for well, the wipers cut out. You don't know. Well, what I would do is just mask the entire thing, yeah. you know, and then obviously just go over them and just, you know, mask round. And then afterwards, you could then cut along here if you wanted to and literally do it. But normally I would then just mask it right across, mask over the windscreen white and then paint them afterwards. To be honest, they, they look fairly... Because you can fairly, scrape clean them. They look fairly well moulded, don't they? So... Yeah. yeah. I'd be cutting out little triangles. It's in 48 scale. Hmm. I don't use masking fluid. Yeah, right masking around. fluid and then trim it off. I think that's a faff. I'll just mask the entire thing and then paint them in by hand afterwards. If yeah, I would. Them with, I would, I would yeah. Yeah. If you paint them with acrylic, you can sort of scratch off. Yeah, just scrape and clean it. That's what I do. Just pop around with a sharp cocktail stick yeah. or toothpick and just clean them up. And away you go. Yeah. But yeah, don't overthink it, I think, is the easy answer on that one. Yeah, so. you could always paint it in with like acrylic paint afterwards, couldn't you? Hmm. Uh, right. Uh, do, 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 do. Thanks for your great work with uh, Flory Fest. Uh, awesome uh, this year uh, and uh, making Pramjet a superstar. He is, definitely. Uh, Mike says Hi, guys. Uh, I'm about to hit the spray booth with his 132nd Fly Wessex. I'm doing the blue and red HU5. What Flory wash or washes do you recommend? Doctor. Doctor. Bye. I think grime's a bit too muddy colour. Yeah. I think go with dark dirt on that, if I'm honest. To be honest, it's all mine, Ad. I know I did mine in the grey, but um, so, slightly different. So what colour, sorry, what colour was it? Uh, he's doing it in the dark blue He's with the red. Ah, you see, this is where the thought technique will come in fantastic <laughs> with the dust, the grime, yes. and then the dark dirt. It would actually yeah. work on that really well. You could do the blue, the dark dirt. You'll still see with the blue because it'll look very, very dark. I think if you did it in grime, it'd be too light. It'd look muddy. It wouldn't look right. Or of course, you could do add a little bit of grey or dust or white uh, into the dark dirt and lighten it slightly so it stands out a little bit more that way. If you wanted to, just mix your colours up. Don't forget, usual thing: whack it on. Not happy with it? Just go over it. Just literally what's stick a, another colour wash right over it. What's a good flory wash for replicating um, car shit? Um, well, I think that's really going to be grime because it's that sort of colour. So if you're planning on flicking that all over it, 
<laughs> Use the thick <laughs> one and yeah. then spatter it. Use the thick one. <laughs> yeah. Like is, it, is, it, is, it, is it fresh or dried? Fresh or crusty? Can we go? Do you? I, I suppose you guys never did it as kids, but living in the country, we used to do cow pat flinging at each other because they're like frisbees. When they go rock hard in the sun in the summer, you just pick one up and just hoof it at your mate as he's walking along. And you can always decapitate someone with one of these things. They're lethal. And if you've got a cow, it's had a massive pet. It, you know, you could get quite a large one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's still a little bit soggy underneath. It was great. Oh, I think you did as kids. Yeah, me. <laughs> That's what us country folk did. It kept us out of trouble. <laughs> or we used to cross this field, right, and it had a bull in it. So, and it used to be this thing. It was quite a dodgy one as well, especially if he had the ladies with him. So, um, so we used to literally like take turns of running across this field to see and then see if it would come after you. But uh, luckily, we all survived it to adulthood. So, amazingly, we made all of that. The kids have PlayStations <laughs> these days. They don't know what they're missing, do they? No, that's it. Near <laughs> death. <laughs> Being, you know, mauled by a bull. <laughs> trampled. <laughs> they miss out on all of these things. <laughs> Right, uh, Chris says, hi team. Uh, did any of you uh, see the Airfix Lightning exploding diorama on the Airfix Modeling Group Facebook? Oh, no, I didn't. No, that's oh. the trouble. You're not on Facebook. Sorry. Also, quite like the idea of painting uh, the sprue and then displaying the, uh, in a photo frame. What do you guys mm. reckon? That's an old concept, that is. That's been done a long time, isn't it? Painting it all up Paint on the up. sprue and then bunging it on a <laughs> box frame. Yeah. Oh, I've always, always fancy doing that, but... but you should have done that with your M wrap. Oh, yeah, you, you, you <laughs> would have had a lot of pictures. <laughs> I have seen that Airfix um, kit at Telford one year, and it did look cool because they, mm. they put it on wires. Yeah, it was really clever. It's like but an I've exploded seen... diagram, wasn't it? With them all done. Yeah, that was I've proper good. That, that was. Look, I think that looked. We looked really cool. Mm. Oh, I don't know, boxer. I've seen people do like the, the Airfix ones where they framed it. It's, it's all yeah, right. a few guys on the site have done it, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a few of our members have done it. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. cool. Like, I've never done it myself, but mm. that's cool. I like that idea. Uh, Owen says, uh, "Hi team. First off, thank you for great work over the weekend with Flory Fest. Uh, I was uh, stuck in after having surgery." Ooh, hope you're doing right now. Uh, so it's great to have the shows to keep me going. My question is, he's bought the AK Weathering Pencils. Matt, you're up. Earlier this year, I've only used them properly on my Walker Bulldog, which is very nice, uh, after using some oils uh, first and then found them to be excellent for doing streaking and dirt effects. What is the team uh, take on having uh, you use them yourselves for any projects? Matt uses them all the time. I, like I used them. them for a bit, but yeah, I quite like them to be honest. I like the effect. And here's his bulldog. That's nice, that bulldog, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's what I'm, I'm planning on doing them on my um, Spitfire when I get back onto it. Mm. To do I, really like I, can, I can recommend getting that. Yeah. Yes. They are really yes. good for pencils because, like the Flory Wash, they're, getting. they're reversible. So yeah. any weathering, I always like the wash is good. You can take it back if it goes wrong. The same with the pencils. You can just wash it off with water. And you can use them for chipping just by dry, you know, just chipping them on, having a really fine point on them. Or you can sort of like, you know, use them as watercolours to, as a, as a black. Do you know what? It's really good. It's similar to what Matt's doing there. They're mm. really good fun. They're really nice to use. And it's like colour. It's really zen. Yes. I love them. Again, it's it's one of them you've got to use it over a flat coat. You can't use it over a satin or a or a gloss coat because it no. won't stick. No. It's it's a bit like the oil paints and um, it needs something to grip to. It needs some texture. So yeah, over a flat coat. And again, I I tend not to use them like a pencil. I tend to use a brush, wet, you know, and then use them as paint. Yeah, I think it worked. That works better for me. To, but um, yeah, I think again. I've got them. I might use them again on a new project. They go well with Phil's wash as well, actually. It's one of them mm. funny things I would say about oil paints complementing Phil's wash. The, the pencils do as well. So it's a win win, isn't it? Mm. And you, yes. can, like, you can wind it back if it goes a bit wrong, mm. which is brilliant for me because it usually goes wrong when I do wet it. Yes. 
So okay, go. right, a couple more questions and then we'll have to call it. So uh, Andrew's basically saying he's been watching me build the 48 scale F15C uh, midlife upgrade program, one that I did a few years ago. Um, and he's having a go with the big Ed set. He's trying to co conquer his fear of using photo etch. Well, no pressure when you buy that set because there's a lot of photo etch in that one. Yeah. Uh, in the rear cockpit, Phil uh, mentions about using the Albion alloys. Did I? Crikey, so I can't even remember that build. Uh, uh, tubing for plastic. Uh, I would like to get some, but I don't know what size to get. God. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, good starting points, please. Albion alloys do lots of them. <laughs> uh, what I would suggest is they come in various inner and outer diameters. You do like a 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and they all will go inside each other. That's how they do them. So I would probably get something probably around about, you know, start at like a 0 0.6, which I think has got a 0 0.4, and then you can get something with like a 0 0.4 to a, you know, a 0 0.2, uh, a couple of packs of things like that. I've got pretty much like John showing there, I've got a drawer full with them all so in. I've got, if you want the code numbers, SFT1 and SFT2. So what's the inner and outer diameters on them? So 2 starts at 0.3 and goes up to 0.9. And 1 goes up from 0.4 to 1 mil. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're really useful. And they last for ages, to be honest. You get like about three full lengths of it in those tubes. There's like yeah. three or four lengths, I think it is, in each tube. And say, I bought a handful at a show once, and I'm still working my way through them now. So they're just dead handy for doing little bits of scratch building or anything else like that, pinning even, stuff like that as well. So, but yeah, just get yourself a little selection of them, and you'll be good to go with those. Uh, Adam says, out of the ICM AH1 Cobras and special hobby offerings in uh, 148 scale, which would you recommend? The one that's on sale now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it depends which one you want to do, a late, a mid, or a early, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The special I get, I get hobby it. ones come with stuff, don't they? Because they're a bit of a special edition one. Yes. You get some 3D printed parts and some other bits. Obviously, the ICM one is just the basic basic kit so, mm. so if you can get a special lobby one because you've got bits if you want the bits with it i'd get the special lobby one but yes no idea on that yeah uh so i'm just queuing up for the next question because there's a thing here uh where are we ak where's oils while well, you're finding it do you want to talk about exploded di uh, picture frame things mm. i'd love to do a, a fix one seven second jet provost in one <laughs> you haven't got the decals for it, Andy. Well, uh, he, he said he was going to give me the decals back, so I stopped. He actually them. showed them Stop. on the screen and said, "Here's your decals. I'll bring them into work on Monday." And they're still there. I've been up, I've been up twice. Still actually, I tell you what, Andy. I said I'd bring them up on Friday, so I'll, I'll test them tomorrow. Say <laughs> 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 which Friday? Though, didn't you? Yeah, I'm not there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, right. if, I bring, if I bring these back, just... Andy, you'd better bloody build one. Oh, well, there you <laughs> are. We'll start a GoFundMe to get... Don't put them back in your drawer. The the I was going to say, bring them to the wedding with you and you can give them to them then. <laughs> and then you'll lose them on the way home. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this way, I, I, took a, I took a birthday card to work with me this morning. <laughs> Show that to make sure that I made sure I got the birthday card. And that I gave it to, to, to Matt that he <laughs> made sure that he didn't forget to take it. Home with him. Yeah. <laughs> and, let me, let, hey, and he still left it in the car. Still in the car. <laughs> no, no, no. It's been delivered to to <laughs> the wife for safekeeping, <laughs> so she has got it. So I'm now He's uh, off the like <laughs> voided all responsibility for that card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just to answer Jim, just because it's right there. Uh, yes, I am. I've got one of our kind members is sending me the decals to do this in the North Atlantic scheme. So hopefully they'll be here in a day or two. Um, so I'll have the decals for doing this in the white and the grey. So yes, it's going to go North Atlantic scheme for the hell diver. Okay, Gary says, hi Phil, just a question. There's so many oil paints uh, out there. Can you tell me the ones uh, I should start off with? Uh, I know it's basically up to me and all the rest of it. Right, okay, so obviously I would recommend, because it's, it's how I started and all the rest of it, is just to get the one that's sold out, but hopefully we'll get them in soon, is that one. <laughs> 
because in here you've got basically the smoke that I use all the time. You've got the oranges, the reds, the blues, and that's how I do all my fading and everything else. All right, because they are out of stock, and perhaps you maybe just want to grab uh, some right now. They are well, on a plane, train, or lorry, or something. Possibly with in. this tomorrow. They should be in. Yeah, with. Yeah, it might should, be in tomorrow. Yeah. So I'll keep Fair an enough. eye out. In fact, I'll have a look on um, tracking and see when it, where it is in the world. All right, have a look on tracking. In the meantime, I highly recommend this one, which is smoke, which is ABT005. I don't know, off the top of my head. All right, which is smoke. I use this all the time as my dark one. It's basically sepia, but it's what they call smoke. Another handy one to have is the light grey. So if you're doing anything with grey and you need to lighten it, then light grey is the one to go. So that's ABT170. That's a really good one. And a great one is neutral grey as well, which is ABT100. And this is more of a sort of, um, it's got a bit of a buff into it. So it's a grey buff. It's like a neutral grey rather than a sort of blue grey. Uh, that's great for lightening. Apart from that, other colours really is dependent on what you're doing. So if you're doing things, obviously, with um, uh, greens uh, and stuff like that, then you need a bit of yellow, obviously, for lightening the green. So you're just going to work around what makes colours up. If you're doing browns, and obviously you want to put a little bit of buff into it and lighten those up. If you're doing things with, you know, obviously, other colours, you're going to go in. Another nice one to have as well, which is one that I use all the time, is this one, which is... Uh, ABT uh, 020, which is faded yellow. This is the one that I use for hydraulics and oils because when you put it on, it's bright orange. The more you rub it, it goes from orange to yellow. So it gives it that sort of faded, oily look. But probably they're my go-to for pretty much everything and uh, I, that I do, even though I've got a drawer full of them with other hundreds of other colours. So One I'll probably add to that is Starship Filth. Yeah. Mm. Which I would say is definitely more for either sci-fi or ground vehicles and stuff, not so much for aircraft, because it's green. And obviously you don't want green snot coming out, you're a nice new plane. So, but yeah, Starship Filth's all right for sort of ground stuff, but I certainly wouldn't use it on aircraft and things like that, because it's got a proper green hue to it. So it's like smoke with green in it, um, they, how they do it. They, um, I've never noticed it got a green hue. Yeah, it's yeah. a slightly, yeah. Yeah, it's got a green hue to it. So it's basically like smoke with green, I always think. Mm. So if you don't forget, with oils, you can mix them. So you can mix them up into a little palette for yourself, like I often do. If I think, I'm mean, like when I was doing the grey work the other day on something or other, it was like, it was slightly wrong. So we added a little bit of um, smoke into it to darken the grey, you know, and again, you could lighten it up as well with other colours into it. So don't be afraid to mix the colours to what you want as well. So if you did want something greeny, you could do smoke, add a little bit of green to it, and you can have Starship Filth, you know, so... Hmm. Well, that, that order should be with us tomorrow, and it's showing at the moment at quarter past seven. It was mm -hmm. at Dartford awaiting uh, release from customs. Yeah. My home. My home. <laughs> it's where <laughs> I hail from, Dartford. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I would say. If you can, you know, 24 quid, it will last you forever, literally, in your entire life. You, you won't need anything else. Go with that. And then what you can do is then you can pick out individual ones to go with it as well uh yeah. some of the other ones so but definitely if you're into aircraft but obviously same thing goes the other way if you're into armor perhaps get one of the armor starting sets and doing it that way um it's so, same yeah. as like if, like matt does the flesh you can if you buy the flesh set it's yes like you know hmm. most of the colors you, you use some blues as well don't you matt with the yeah blues reds stuff. yeah 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 but you could like I say you can mix colors anyway just make a palette up like i was showing on um yeah. weekend and uh, get your colours down. And even if you don't think you're going to use them, yeah. put them down anyway. Two other good colours as well, which not really for aircraft, but I think it is light mud and dark mud. Mm. Are two really versatile colours. So, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, Brian says, hi, lads. On Flory First, you mentioned that decal, uh, Tamiya decals don't respond well to micro set and sole. Which solutions do you recommend? Aftermarket decals. No. Um, so <laughs> I would say... Tamiya X20A. Tamiya X20A, as in like acrylic thinners, it um, because it's alcohol based, has got bite and that will work just as well. And it works quite well. The only thing is don't let it pull 
otherwise if it if it beads up as it evaporates it becomes super super strong uh, with the alcohol and then consequently what happens is it will make a bullseye or a fish eye or a whelk or whatever you want to call it in your decal so make sure it's smooth thin coats onto it uh, otherwise it's too aggressive but apart from that there is other ones you can buy tamia in different flavors can't you sort of strong and all the rest of it but tamia decal is notoriously really thick so they they need time it's a more a case of time just keep going at it going at it a uh, quick one there for Alistair, because I know you asked this before and I missed it. Uh, have I ever built the Tornado F3? Only if you count the Airfix one. And that's oh, proper rank. Yeah, the <laughs> Rebel one. Yeah, I haven't built the Rebel one, but obviously if you're going to do it, do the Rebel one. That's where you want to go. But I haven't built that one yet. I've done the uh, GR1. I did it as a GR1. I had the IDS and converted it to the GR1. But uh, the new Rebel one, like Nathan said, it's a great kit. Not a problem uh last question um from uh doo -doo -doo -doo. jph says uh hi phil have you made a how-to video on your pigments oh god yeah ages ago somewhere um i had a look at your tutorial section can't find any it, yeah there is i did loads back in the day um you're probably better off watching me use them in anger so have a look at some of the armor builds i've done and things like that because i tend to use yeah, a lot of pigments the, the world war one the met them tamia, tamia, tamia world war fight. one did the yeah. sherman's got the sherman there you go the sherman yeah. thinking about yeah. it that's got a ton of pigments it's all pigments on the sherman uh if not you know any of the other ones i think i used it on the um uh yeah, yeah chieftain mm. and probably the 432 as well so look at any of the armor ones, because I always use a lot of pigments on those. Um, so yes, but there, was, there would have been some videos done ages ago about using pigments, but probably never made it during the transfer. As it turns out, did a lot of videos, which I forgot to do as you, well. You so. don't really use pigments, do you, Matt? Not as much, no. Not nowadays. I mean, to be honest with you, this um, chassis is very clean. So I'm thinking that I might actually chuck some pigments on the bottom of this. So that'd be a quick way of just weathering up the chassis. All the tops are nice and dirty and underneath spotlessly clean, which is a bit odd, but things with pigments, mm. they're very messy, aren't they? Hmm. They can be, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the only trouble with the pigments, they are the gift that keeps coming. It's you know, I like to say we, they we, go we everywhere. Sell, we sell these, where are they? Where the bloody are they? Oh, sorry, sorry about other pigments are available. <laughs> yeah, the pigment jockeys from BMS. Yeah. You're going to do it, yeah. pigment, which is obviously liquid pigment. All right, don't even go there, you foist stop. I didn't. But, did I say a word? Your mouth Have was I? about to open. Then, I so never stop. said a word. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to do a demo on them at the weekend. And the, yes, yeah, I got into painting my fit bloke. Didn't I? That was it. <laughs> I got trouble. carried away. That was <laughs> <a week laughs> Mester. Cool. Right. Okay. So in summary for everyone, tomorrow I'm going to do a roundup show with you. It'll be really short because, yeah, there's not a lot going on this week. So obviously we didn't do any shows apart from this one and be tomorrow's stuff. But <laughs> for members, you will get part three of the Viking build, which pretty much gets you to here. You're pretty much with me on this one because, as I say, I've been working on this one. I did the editing of this before we uh, I came down to do this this evening. So um, that one is all set, ready to go. It's up on the servers now. So that will be up with you tomorrow. Do the catch-up show. To be honest with you, because I'm so far behind, I'm, you are with me on this one. And because of a certain thing happening next week, I don't know how this is going to pan out. So we'll, needless we'll, to say... <laughs> we'll, we'll be with you live on next Thursday at 7.30. Yes, yeah. that's it. <laughs> live from the reception. <laughs> we could do that just as a giggle. I'm sure I'll get murdered for it, but it'd be worth it. <laughs> married now, what are you going to do about it, eh? So you know what you're married, just saying. So, uh, but anyway, obviously I am getting married next week. So I am on holiday from Wednesday. All right. So my last show with you guys will be Tuesday afternoon with Matt. Uh, we've got our live show with you. And then I'm on holiday on the Wednesday for sorting stuff out. Because obviously I get married on Thursday. And then I'm back here for Friday, but that's just sorting stuff out. And then I'm off on my three-day honeymoon to Ooh. glorious Cornwall. <laughs> so, yes. So, anyway, I'll be back Monday night or Monday, late Monday afternoon uh, and everything as well. So, then I've got to sort everything out and get going again with everything. So, technically, I'll be back at it on Wednesday. 
So, so that's how this is going to work. PM point of view, last orders for posting next week is going to be Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, because obviously Wednesday afternoon I'm leaving to come down to go to the wedding and we'll be there till well, then me and Andy will be back Monday. So Andy's obviously going to the wedding as well. So we'll literally be shut. So if mm. you want anything, get it get it ordered like tomorrow, you know, through. Um, but yeah, last pickup for us is going to be Wednesday, which is going to be Wednesday lunch because we our pickup's about two o'clock. So yeah. if you mm-hmm. get your orders in before one, they'll get processed. Yes. So there you go. We'll we'll put a thing up on the site as well just to say you know we are shut for annual mm-hmm. leave from such and such a date till whenever. But yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, be fun. Cool. Good. So, yes. So, consequently, the Flory Model store will be closing as well from Tuesday for the week. So, um, we're not going to be obviously getting any of the orders out because I won't be here. So, no. um, from that point of view as well. So, obviously, it'll be no videos, no nothing or anything for that particular week. But we will be back with you bright and sparky with the PM show the following Wednesday as we make our way through. You can still buy off the PM site during the week, but we obviously won't start posting again until the Monday. Mm. Yes. And thank you to everyone saying uh, good luck and all the rest of it. Commiserations. <laughs> Don't do it. Yes, that's all right. Second time's a charm. What could go wrong? <laughs> so, uh, but yes, so that's all good. So, as you say, just be prepared. It will be a little bit of a dull spot for us where we won't be on everything. So, um, as I say, but basically think of it from Wednesday to Wednesday. So, we'll be off Wednesday. We'll be back on Wednesday. So, we'll get the PM show going uh, literally as soon as we get back. And then, obviously, we'll be back with you on Thursday night next week. Um, well, not next week, the week not after. Not next you know week. What I mean. not. Yeah, the week after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool job. Right. No, okay, no. then, guys. We will leave it right there. Happy modeling. Take care. We'll see you all very soon. And I'll catch up with all you guys tomorrow. So, till tomorrow, everybody. Happy modeling. Take care. Say goodbye, gentlemen. We're out.